All right, so here is a book that we got from an educational pile of books. It's called Those, whoops, <laughs> Those Fabulous Frogs. And you see, this is a real life frog in, I guess that's a flower, um, enjoying the rain. Well, I'm gonna assume he's enjoying it. It's kinda hard to say what a frog likes, but I would probably say their venture that they probably like rain. They absorb bloop, 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 into their skin with water, so water is good for them. They are amphibious. So Melvin Berger is who is credited to. So introduction to frogs. Those fabulous frogs. Written by Melvin Berger. Edited by Janet Reed. Designed by Deborah Spindler. Production manager Karen Vigorti. Vigorti. The cover photo is a fry. Oh, it's a mushroom. Flying frog in a mushroom. Um, the back photos are the Australian tree frog. Um. And some other frogs like that. Yes, yeah, so that's a mushroom. Alrighty, let's learn about frogs. <laughs> frogs are amazing animals. They have been around since the age of dinosaurs. They have no fur, no feathers, and no scales. They have lungs but can also breathe through their skin. They absorb it, and you actually breathe a little bit through your skin too, which is why they say things like antiperspirant shouldn't be all over your skin, or it's unhealthy to wear a lot of plastic. Frogs have long, powerful back legs. Look at those long legs. See, front leg, left back leg. Very different. Here's a little froggy frog. Um, to, to jump through the air, a frog can jump more than 20 times the length of its body. Oh my goodness. Whee! So this over here, I didn't reference at all, is a table of contents. So it shows you a page number, page number, Oop, down here, and what it's about. So introduction to frogs, life cycle of frogs characteristics of frogs which is to say things about them that are you know their toes and feet and legs and eyeballs things like that what makes them a frog natural defenses of frogs page 10 frogs in the web of life and preserving frog habitats 14. all right i want to show you this cool frog skeleton look at that isn't that cool a frog has no ribs. This skeleton shows the length of its hind legs and its small upper body. Look at that. Its legs are almost double the size of its torso. Goodness grief. And his toes are longer than his head. Imagine if you're just the toes of your feet back here were bigger than your head. Wow. What big shoes you'd wear, hmm? I'm going to make sure this is pretty well centered for us. Many frogs go through metamorphosis. So metamorphosis. The big letters are to show that it's an emphasis. Uh, like in, uh, in that movie where they go, Win <laughs> Wingardium Leviosa. Leviosa. Like there's an emphasis. The change from tadpoles that live in water into adult frogs that live on land. Animals that can live in water and on land are called amphibians. The word comes from the Greek word amphibios, which means double life. Ooh. And here's a life cycle. Look at this. I know many little ones do the difference. So here is some eggs. Many frogs, like the wood frog, go through three life stages. 
they start as clumps of eggs that female frogs lay in the water. The eggs sink to the bottom of the water. Soon the eggs drift to the surface of the water. The eggs hatch into little fish-like creatures with long tails. I'm just going to move all this closer to you so you can kind of see what it says. They are called tadpoles or polywogs. And yes, the Pokemon is named for them. At first, the tadpole breathes through gills just like a fish. Soon, the tadpole begins to grow legs. Look, he's got legs and a big tail. Its hind legs grow first, or appear first. Ooh. Oops, sorry. Then its lungs begin to develop, and front legs begin to emerge. See, he's got legs and a big long tail. The tadpole loses its gills. Finally, a tiny froglet. Ooh, froglet. With just the stump, just a little bit of a tail comes out of the water. The froglet soon loses its tail. Now it looks like an adult frog. See, it just looks like an adult frog. And look, see, frogs like to live in places like this where they can hide among the leaves and poop into the water. They can't stray too far from the water though. Oh, that's what it's gonna say here. It's gonna say they need to stay by the water. Look at all the different kinds of frogs first. Just look. Oh my goodness. So this is a bullfrog. The largest frog in the United States. The bullfrog spends almost all its time in or around water. And they have this big pouch here where they make... Like, you can kind of see a little bit here. The horned frog. Fierce and fanged. This South American frog, also called Bell's frog, I'm pretty sure Bell's is the name of the person who, who discovered it, hops around the jungle floor and hides in dirt or leaves to catch its next meal. The horned frog travels to water only to mate and lay eggs. So only when it's baby making time and there's babies, otherwise they stay away. The red-eyed tree frog, this little Red-eyed, boop, boop, one, two, tr tree frog lives mostly in the pool of water that forms in the center of bromeliad, the type of plant, plants in tropical rainforests. I'm pretty sure that's like the big leafed ones. All right. Uh, um, so this one talks about frogs versus toads. So we'll, we'll, we'll read what the big letters are on this page. Although metamorphosis enables the adult frog to breathe air and live on land, most frogs still need water for the moisture it provides their skin. So, just like you get all dry in the winter, they get dry all year round. These frogs live around bodies or pools of water where they will mate, deposit their eggs, and continue the life cycle. So to mate is how you make babies. Um, and they, and they, frogs have their babies in eggs. And they grow doo -doo 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 from eggs into, like we saw, a life cycle. All right. Frog or toad. People often confuse these two amphibians. Although frogs and toads seem alike, they differ in a few ways. Other than Mr. Tog, frog and Mr. Toad, right? Most herpetologists, herpetologists, the scientists that who sub study reptiles and amphibians, use the same use the name frogs to mean both frogs and toads oh my so it's hard to tell huh so frogs and toads see how really they, they look very similar right frogs spend more time in the water a frog's skin is moist and smooth so it's kind of a little damp fella it has a slim body and long legs 
toads spend more time on land and less time in the water. A toad's skin is thicker and bumpier. It has a plump body and shorter legs. Mm -hmm. See? Kind of hard to tell in this picture, but you can kind of see the smooth, the smaller bumps, bigger bumps, kind of longer legs, bigger legs. I love tree frogs. Do not ever touch a tree frog because most of them are, um, I believe, toxic or poisonous. Um, poisonous to the touch or toxic to eat. Don't eat them, obviously. <gasps> Look at him. Oh, look at his legs. Oh my gosh. It's like a giant M. Look. He's like an M. Alright. Alright. Frogs are found on every continent except Antarctica. There are over 3,500 frog species. They vary greatly in color, size, and even foot shape. In fact, the shape of a frog's hand boop, or foot boop, is a good way to tell how a frog moves and where it lives. Ooh. All right. So I think you can guess from the picture, but where does this froggy live, do you think? It lives in the boo 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 trees. Tree frogs are excellent climbers. See, he's climbing up a leaf. They use the round, sticky pads. See their little toes have those little kind of balls at the end? At the ends of their fingers and toes to grab the branches. This is the barred leaf frog from Australia. Look at little stripes. They look so cute. All right. Do, 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 do. Swimming frogs use their webbed hind feet to speed through the water. See his webbed feet? Their toes grab onto rocks and weeds, protecting the frogs from powerful currents. This spotted North American swimmer is the leopard frog. All right. Where is this froggy? Is he in the water? Mm -mm. Is he in a tree? Mm -mm. Nope. He is in the dirt with pretty flies. Digging or burrowing, that's where they dig into the ground. Frogs use these sharp growths on their hind feet. This Australian banjo frog digs a hiding place in the soil as soon as it senses danger. It's gonna go ch -ch 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 and hide. That's a clever little froggy. All right. This is where we get into the characteristics of most frogs. What makes a frog a frog? But whatever a frog's color, size, or shape, most frogs have some characteristics in common. Mm hmm. <laughs> See here. A frog's skin is sensitive enough to absorb moisture, heat from the sun, and cold. A frog feels a sudden change in temperature and will move quickly to a sunny spot to get warmer or to a shady spot under the leaves of a tree to get cooler. So that's how they temperature regulate is by moving to where it's warmer or cooler. Even though a frog has excellent hearing, it doesn't have outer ears, not like us. It hears through the round patch behind each eye called the tympanum. Tympanum. See, that, that, that spot right there. It looks kind of like he's got a big patch on his head, right? Right there? That's his ear. You see that on the froggies? It's a little less pronounced on this one. A frog's bulging eyes let it see in almost all directions at once. This helps the frog see its enemies as well as catch its prey. What's this, what's this one going to do? He's going <laughs> with a tail. When a frog sees an insect walking or flying by, it quickly flicks out its sticky tongue and grabs it. <laughs> But you've seen that in cartoons. They're super fast. 
Another simula similarity is that it, usually, it is usually the male frog that advertises, which is to say it's putting itself out there, its presence with sound. The male frog is able to make this sound without opening its mouth. You see how that one's throat's real big? And this throat's really big? That's part of how it makes the riveting sound. The female frog hears the calls, but most female frogs do not make these sounds at all. Can you tell which of these frogs is making sounds? Hmm, let's see here. Is this one being noisy? What about this one? How about this one? Does it look... Or this one? Is this one, is this one making a noise? Ah, oh, this one just went... All right, these ones are making noises. All right. The bullfrog repeats a low-pitched song that sounds like a... All right. As its name suggests, the barking tree frog sounds like a dog. And in the early spring, hundreds of spring peepers sing a high-pitched beep, 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 beep. <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm knocking things down. Okay. We're pretty close. Alright. Most frogs have clever ways of protecting themselves from danger. Can you see this frog? What about this frog? Believe it or not, the frogs above and below are both gray tree frogs. The gray tree frog can change its color from green to gray, which helps it blend into its surroundings. This defense is known as camouflage. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Look, can you find him? He's right there. What about this one? He's right there. What? Just think, if he was a little bit further away and he closed his eyes, would you be able to find him? It's hard to find him without the shadows. Imagine if he was very, very still. He'd be the winner of, of hide and seek. All right. When confronted with danger, some frogs, like the Asian horned frog, will try to look fierce and make a threatening posture. Other frogs might even puff themselves up to appear bigger than they actually are. Look at him. He got a big mouth. He might bite you. Down. Don't you think that? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Don't want to leave it that. Is this frog coming or going? Are those eyes? Or is that a butt? Hmm. It's hard to tell. Hard to tell. But the four-eyed frog has turned its back and exposed its eye spot. This is meant to startle and confuse the enemy, which may think it is under attack. Okay, how about these two frogs? Mm, do they look the same? They look very similar. They got the yellow stripies, they've dark. All these, though these frogs look almost identical. The frog on the left, so right and left, is a poison dart frog. And the frog on the right is a harmless, harmless leptodactylid. Leptodactylid. Looking like a poisonous frog has its advantages. Predators mistake the leptodactylid for a poisonous frog and stay away. This defense is called mimicry. So they're copying something else in nature. They're miming it to keep safe. So some frogs use camouflage so they can hide in plain sight. Some frogs make themselves look big and scary. Say, oh, I'm too big and scary. You won't mess with me. Some make it look like I might be watching you. Boop, boop, boop. And some look like something else. All right. This is frogs in the circle of life over here. From the circle of life. Frogs play an important role in the web of life. They snap up huge numbers of insects and worms, as well as small fish and other small animals. Look, he's going for it. 
I like how it looks like he's like he's like playing a little piano. <laughs> but he's actually jumping to go get the buggy. So, at the same time, snakes, turtles, skunks, raccoons, wading birds, and large fish snap up frogs. Nom 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 nom. And a little danger rope. My daddy cat would say probably a no probe. The sneaky. By eating large numbers of insects that might otherwise become serious pests, frogs help humans. But frogs also help humans in other ways. Not only do mosquito bites hurt and itch, but some tropical mosquitoes spread disease. Frogs control the mosquito population by eating great amounts of these pests. So basically, if they go on somebody who's sick, they can go on the next person and make that person sick. That would be no good at all. Australian tree frogs give off a chemical that help to heal sores on human skin. Other frogs produce chemicals that can be used as painkillers or may even one day cure diseases. Researching about animals is very important because we're always learning new things. By studying frogs and their habitats, that's where they live, some scientists believe they can learn how radiation from the sun affects wildlife. The scientists believe that too much harmful radiation may be responsible for the destruction of frog eggs in wetlands. So there's they're studying what nature is doing to animals, too. Alrighty. So this one says it's a little bit more depressing, but it's still good to learn. But today, some frog species are disappearing. Some may even be extinct. One reason is that when cities and farmlands expand, people destroy far frog habitats by cutting down trees and draining wetlands. Also, chemicals used to control insects and weeds pollute the waters in which frogs live. They're very sensitive to that. Plus, things that kill bugs can kill their food, too. Whatever the reasons, the fact remains. Some species are disappearing. So this is an area that looks like it was probably cleared by humans. Look at this cute little froggy. He looks like candy. Golden mentellas live only in Madagascar. But their habitats are being destroyed and today very few remain. I don't actually, uh, when was this book published? It was published in ooh, 1994. So this is 30 years old. I don't know if these, if these are extinct now or not. But um, I know that even in places where they reintroduce populations, they're still not doing well. And most, most animals, not frogs specifically. But red-legged frogs, once a common species in the United States, can't be found in their usual habitats. Harlequin frogs used to be found in the mountains of South America, but they have not been seen since the late 1980s. They are really pretty. The disappearance of the California Cascades frog is still a mystery. So far, there is no evidence of water pollution in the Rocky Mountain regions where the frogs were once found. So this is from 1994, so there may be more information about all of these. Northern leopard frogs were once the most common in North America. But in Canada, they are dying out and have almost disappeared. Now I said that was 30 years ago. There used to be many of these tiny, beautiful glass frogs in Costa Rica. So as of 1994, only a few of the glass frogs could be found. See why they look like glass? Again, it looks like candy. Probably shouldn't want to like, want to eat all of the frogs. <laughs> I wonder if they if I'm part bird. Like, ah. Frogs have been around since the dinosaurs, but now frogs need our help. They still need our help. What can we do to make sure they continue to survive? So, one of the things that can be done is, uh, it says here, adopting a frog pond is one way to help. 
By keeping close rock on the frogs and other pine pond wildlife, we can take action to preserve the natural habitat. So what, what doing things to adopt like a pond would be is to make sure that there's not any pollution by um, litter or other things like that. You would want to work with your community about that, but certainly there's someone who could howl if you were interested or a group of your friends were. I'm sure your school actually has things like that too. This is a frog in jump, 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 jump. And then this is an index and it tells you all the different things you can find. So if you were looking for tadpoles, it shows you what pages those are on, where the word mimicry comes up and a couple of different frogs. So that is those fabulous frogs read aloud. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for listening and you have a great day.